Well, governments shape so much of modern life. And, of course, the things that they do are sometimes quite similar, like keeping the lights on, making sure that every kid has a place in school. But the way that they do those things is endlessly varied. And as scholars who study government, it's sometimes hard to get a, a handle on those differences. We can look at laws, we can look at surveys, but those only give us a snapshot. So we realized that the footprint that government agencies leave online offered a new window into what they do and how they're structured to do those tasks. we decided to look into the structure of state governments. Why state governments? Well, because there's 50 of them, and that's, you know, st statistically that's an interesting number. There are 50 of them. They're, they share many things. <clears throat> they, they are under the same constitution. They all speak the same language, so their websites are in the same language and so on. And it would allow us to, to look at issues of a political science and economics that uh, had not been seen before. Pretty much every agency nowadays in the United States has a website. On that website they describe their activities and they link to the websites of other agencies uh, with whom they interact or that they think citizens might also want to visit. So the next thing we did is we we downloaded the data, all 53,000 websites of uh, state government agencies on the web. So that gives you already an impression, 53,000 websites. To map the online footprints of U.S. state governments, we use web crawling, meaning that we created a program that downloaded all the web pages of all public agencies and the links between them. We started by building a directory of public agencies' website by looking at the information provided by state governments in their online websites. And then we integrated it with information coming from nonprofit agencies and Wikipedia. Each agency became a node in our network and the links between them, the connections. If this was Facebook, then each agency would be a person and the hyperlinks will be friendships among people. We then use the words inside each website of each agency to understand which function or functions the agency implemented. We use this as a basis for our classification of government activities, which allow us to distinguish, for instance, schools from libraries or environmental protection agencies from public utilities. The result was a map telling us which function is performed by which agency and the connection between these agencies and these functions. Well, we found several interesting things that I'm going to remark. The first one is that uh, uh, there seems to be uh, very large economies of scale in government. Uh, big governments and small governments uh, have uh, um, structures that are not all that different, except for uh, things like schools and libraries that more or less go up with population. Uh, the structure of government is relatively unresponsive to the size of the population. Then we asked the question, uh, how similar uh, are governments? And, and some functions of government, like education, tend to be more standardized in the way they represent themselves in the web. Others are more uh, heterogeneous, and we were able to measure these these dimensions of um, of, of uh, uh, these different functions. And finally, we asked ourselves, okay, so what makes governments adopt a cer certain structure? Is it the uh, ideology, so that maybe Republicans and Democrats do things differently? Is it income and wealth? Is it rich places do it one way, poor places do it another way? Is it uh, geography, you know, uh, warmer places and colder places or coastal places and inland places? We all found the effect of these things very mute. 
What governments seem to be structured around is the structure of the economies on which they are. So we, th we think that that finding is very interesting and important. It means that somehow governments are embedded in the economy in, in which they are inserted. So the structure of the economy has a lot to do with the structure of government. I think we've only scratched the surface of what these data can tell us about modern government. Uh, and there are a couple of interesting directions that our team wants to take this. First, we want to explore more deeply this seeming disconnect between voters' preferences and the ideology of their state and government structure, which is very surprising to us. Second, our current data are just a snapshot in time. Just 2014, what state governments look like at that time. But governments are continually evolving to accommodate new preferences, new conditions, shocks, natural disasters. And we think that by crawling the web to understand how governments have changed over time, we can get a new sense of how they evolve. So uh, now that we understand the methodology of how to collect the data and how to analyze the data, I think the method can travel abroad. We can look at uh, the different structures of government in the world and see how, how they're structured, how they define their functions, how they interact their functions, how their functions scale to the populations they're attending to. So we can look at these questions uh, with these methods. I'm sure that the answers that we will find are going to be different and very interesting.